Hey y'all, so today I'm just going to film a bunch of different variations of squats. Um, a lot of people can't do a barbell squat for a lot of different reasons. The bar itself weighs about 45 pounds, which is the size of a toddler. So sometimes it's hard to put the bar on your back. Um, you may not have a squat rack, you may not have someone to spot you. There's a ton of different reasons. The good news is there's a lot of variations of the squat that you can do without even needing a barbell. I use it because obviously as a power lifter, that's what you're gonna use in a competition. And then that's where I can get the most stimulus for my muscles um, for a lot of different reasons. But anyway, I thought I'd give you a bunch of different other ideas um, for those of you who just can or don't want to. So as I was editing this video, I realized that I didn't talk about footwear, which is something that a lot of people have questions about. You'll see in a lot of my squat videos, I'm wearing either Romaleos, which are heeled lifting shoes, but in this particular one, I was wearing my Converse. Now, the main difference between like Converse is they're really, really flat. And so it lets you get, um, you know, you have that connection to the floor more versus if you have something like a running shoe, there's all this cushion that's under here. And what's really important is your ability to like have those flat shoes so you're not pushed all over the place because of the cushioning. So a lot of people will say my biggest problem with squats is I feel like I get pushed off of balance. And that may be because you're squatting in something like a running shoe where all this cushion makes it harder to evenly distribute your weight. Um, a lot of powerlifting cues are things like spread the floor with your toes to really feel like you're getting into the floor. And that's a lot easier to do with like flat shoes. So if you are squatting and you're feeling like you're off balance or like you're not quite getting it under control, try just taking your shoes off and doing it in your socks and see if that helps you a little bit more. Feel like maybe you're not pitching forward as much. And when you're squatting, you really wanna think about your weight being over your midfoot. I know a lot of people are like, oh, sink into your heels, which is an okay cue, but as long as you're not focusing on sinking into your heels so much that your toes are coming off the ground, um, think of it more of the weight being over the middle of your foot and see if that helps you out at all when you're doing any of these squats. All right, so we're gonna start off with the most common, the body weight squat. This is the basis that you're gonna build everything else on. I squat with my feet about hip width slash shoulder width apart. It's a little bit more narrow than others, so feel free to walk it out a little bit. Um, one thing you'll notice is my toes are not pointed forward. They are slightly turned out. This is normal, this is fine. Um, here's kind of a side view, starting with the narrower squat stance that I use when I squat with the barbell, and then um, I'll widen it up a bit. Things to notice is flat back, um, getting your hips pretty low. Um, this isn't like an ass to grass. Um, I don't think that's necessary. As long as your femurs or your thighs are parallel with the ground, you should be good. Now, if you can't quite get there, there's also assisted squats. I'm holding on to the TRX, I'm trying to find a good position to hold on to it, but something like that to help with balance, you know, choke up, do whatever you need to do. You can also hold on to a wall or the squat rack itself, anything to help you get into those positions easier. Um, here is an assisted pistol squat. I can't do a pistol squat, so I just showed an assisted one. It's a one-legged squat. Um, there's it on the other leg, but this is another good squat variation for body weight squats. Then we'll go on to box squats. So you can pick any size box. This is really good for helping people understand where parallel is. Um, and it also puts a little bit um, more focus on sitting back into a squat. So your toes should never come off the ground when you're sitting back onto the box. I know you can't really see mine, but you're placing your weight on the box, sure, but you're not falling back on it. This is highly popular. It's the Bulgarian split squat. It's where your back leg is elevated. You can have your toes like that, or I'll show you in a bit flat toes. I like my stance a little closer together. I used to do really wide, but I found that this helps me get my glutes a lot better. You can sit back in that knee, that back knee, and really get down in it. But um, taller people, people who just don't feel that, uh, you want to have a little bit wider squat stance, um, don't die. <laughs> you can have some balance issues. But put a barbell, or not a barbell, put like a plate behind the box and that way it doesn't slide. Um, some people have that problem if you're not doing it on a, a kind of floor like I am here. Next is the split squat. I know some people are like, that's a lunge. Lunge implies you're moving forward. This is a stationary movement. So the split squat, um, I don't know how to do it with a flat foot in the back, I don't think you can. So your toes are um, kind of crunched like that. Try not to let your knee go over your front toe. 
and just sit down into it. You can put your arms wherever makes you feel most comfortable. And now you can just add weights to any of the moves we talked about. Here was that first body weight squat holding a kettlebell. You can do a plate, you can do a dumbbell. Um, you can hold it wherever, but one thing to make sure that you are not doing is falling forward. So make sure your chest is always up. So when, even like when you're holding it right there, you don't want to crumple forward. If you are, pick a lighter weight. And then here's a split squats. You know, you can hold a weight in each hand. Um, you can hold it in front of you. You can throw it overhead. Anything that uh, gets different muscle groups and whichever you can do with your balance and your mobility. And banded, this is really popular, adding bands to any sort of leg workout. I'm using a hip circle from Mark Bell here, but there's a, you know, $5 bands that you can get at any sort of store, and it just helps to activate your glutes a little bit more. It's a good warm up for squats too, if you're heading to a barbell after this. And then jump squats, if you're trying to add in cardio, I think these are really good for doing, um, when you're doing like a, a circuit day and you need something to get your heart rate up, you can just, in between supersets do things like these jump squats. You don't need any equipment, pretty easy. And then here is with bands, not quite banded, but with bands, um, choose different types of resistance. You can hold it overhead, you can hold it at your side, um, but again, don't crumble forward. See how my chest is still up? Um, make sure you're just not falling in half and folding over. And the last variation is you can add pulses. So you saw I did like a full move, and then here's it with a pulse. It's just little micro movements at the bottom or top of any sort of movement. So squat, pulse, 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 and up. And again, squat, pulse, 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 and up. That's it.